Now, let us move on uh, to benzene. Benzene is quite easy. I can show you uh, the mechanism directly. Now, uh, but let us focus on this portion here first, involving benzene undergoing electrophilic substitution reaction. But right, we should be getting the hang of it. Why would it undergo electrophilic substitution is, uh, first thing is I look at a charge of my carbon. Benzene is considered as electron rich uh, because of six electrons swimming around benzene, correct? So you will attract an electrophile. So you take part in electrophilic reactions. And in terms of the type of reaction, benzene is highly unsaturated. So by right, it should undergo addition reaction, but it doesn't undergo addition, huh? it prefers substitution. So why is this the case? Is because it wants to keep the resonance stability. Uh, we know that the delocalization in benzene gives benzene additional stability. This stability, we say that this is the resonance stability. Resonance, it is a big deal huh, in organic chem. So benzene, as much as possible, will want to keep this resonance stability. It doesn't like to lose it. So if it undergoes addition and it becomes saturated, it doesn't have this delocalized pi system, the resonance is gone. So it doesn't want that. It will rather undergo substitution reaction so that it can keep, hang on or it can retain this resonance stability, all right? Now involving mechanism wise, we have two uh, to consider involving bromination and nitration. So same idea, the mechanism, we can put it on the left-hand side. The uh, remarks, we can put it on the right-hand side. Now bromination is pretty simple. The first step is to generate the electrophile. Basically the bromine bromine bond will break. Huh? Uh, this is a heterolytic, heterolytic breaking of the bond. Both electrons go to Br. So basically this Br will be a Br plus, it will come here. This Br minus will join to FeBr3 to form FeBr4 minus. I'm generating the electrophile. And then later the second step, the uh, benzene will attack the Br plus to form this uh, intermediate. But maybe before we do that, let us talk about this uh, remarks for the first step. The purpose or the function of my FeBr3, this is a Lewis acid catalyst. Now, uh, it is pretty interesting because later when I compare this with the H2SO4 for nitration, H2SO4, it is also an acidic catalyst, but it is a Bronsted acid in terms of proton donation. FeBr3, it is an acid catalyst, but it is a Lewis acid in terms of accepting electron pair. So I think a pretty interesting comparison uh, that we want to keep in mind. The second step is the benzene, we'll see the bromine, the E+, the e plus. We'll attack the E+, plus. so we draw the arrow from ring to Br+, plus, forms this intermediate, which looks ugly, right? Why is it unstable? It's because um, the uh, delocalization is gone. It breaks the um, resonance stability. You lose the resonance stability. And we also have a positive charge at the center. It makes this guy very unstable. Benzene absolutely hate this configuration, so you want to kick out H+, plus as much as possible, so that it can restore the delocalized pi system. So uh, things to keep in mind is this particular carbon, which is attached to my bromine, this guy actually is saturated because it is attached to four groups. So if this guy is saturated, hybridization for this guy, it is sp3, and there's no pi electrons around the carbon. So when we draw the open ring, the portion where the ring is broken should be around the carbon which is saturated or the carbon which is sp3 hybridized. Okay? So this will be the second step. The remarks, we have also talked about it. The third step is the deprotonation and regenerate my catalyst. So I break the CH bond, both electrons will go back to benzene. H plus is being kicked out and the H plus will combine with FeBr4 minus to form HBr and FeBr3, regenerate my catalyst. Of course, I form H, uh, my bromobenzene as the product, the ring is restored. And FeBr3 as a catalyst is regenerated. You notice for electrophilic substitution, the step first step is a general electrophile. After that, electrophilic attack. After that, there's deprotonation and I regenerate the catalyst. It is a pretty standard uh, three steps. And if I compare this with nitration, we actually notice uh, even though the reaction and the products looks a bit different, the conditions also a bit different, but the steps, Effectively, it is the same. First step, I will generate my electrophile. Second step, it is an electrophilic attack. Third step will be deprotonation and I regenerate my catalyst. So if I do both mechanisms together, it becomes a reinforcement. I understand the uh, nature of electrophilic substitution a lot better. So this one is HNO3 plus 2H2SO4. Remember it's concentrated, huh? concentrated HNO3 in con H2SO4. 
to give me NO2 plus, H3O plus, and 2HSO4 minus. The electrophile is NO2 plus, and uh, the second step, my benzene will attack the NO2 plus. Maybe some of us might wonder, eh, H3O plus also positive charge. Can it be the electrophile? I think I've mentioned this here, H3O plus is relatively more stable than my NO2 plus. So therefore H3O plus is not involved. It doesn't function as the electrophile. Some of us, when we draw this mechanism, maybe you draw the, uh, we show the bonds involving my nitro group. Uh, if your school is doing that, then of course we just keep to that. The positive charge is actually on nitrogen. Uh, so when I draw the arrow pushing here, I also need to point from ring to nitrogen because nitrogen is the one which by right now, uh, it is positively charged. Same thing, I form this ugly guy, right? This sp3 carbon, which is attached to nitrogen, the portion around that carbon, the ring opens, and inside there, there's a positive charge. The third step is the deprotonation, kick out H+, and H+, will combine with HSO4- minus to form, regenerate my uh, catalyst. And of course, form my product, uh, my nitro benzene. Earlier, we've mentioned this guy, right? We say that H2SO4, it is a catalyst. Yes, it is acid catalyst, but uh, interestingly, as compared to FeBr3, this is my Bronsted acid catalyst in terms of proton donation. So when I consider uh, this mechanism involving bromination versus nitration, my acid catalyst, uh, uh, interestingly, it may, uh, we, we managed to compare uh, the difference between these two, these two theories of uh, acids and bases in terms of Bronsted acid base. Bronsted acid base, it is in terms of proton transfer. Bronsted acid, it is a proton donor. Base, it is a proton acceptor. A uh, Lewis acid base theory, Lewis acid, it is an electron pair acceptor. Lewis base, it is an electron pair donor. Uh, so it's just a comparison, but I think it's it, pretty interesting. So good to have this appreciation. Otherwise, mechanism wise for electrophilic substitution is pretty uh, simple. Now, uh, one very simple comparison that we want to talk about is if I have benzene, if I react this with ICL, then can I form aldobenzene as well as chlorobenzene? So what are the considerations that we will need to um, take to decide which is the product that is possible and that's not possible? The idea involving this is actually very simple. We just need to remember that benzene is electron rich, is supposed to react with an electrophile. So if I consider the nature of ICL, again, aldine, it is the electrophile, delta positive charge, because it is less electronegative than chlorine. Chlorine, it is partial minus charge. This guy is the nucleophile. So therefore, if I consider which is the guy that can be attached to benzene, only aldine can be attached to benzene. Chlorine cannot be attached to benzene because benzene is electron rich. Obviously, you attack the E plus. Benzene will not react with a nucleophile. Benzene is electron rich. It will not react with another species, which is also electron rich. So because of this, in this case, I can only form aldobenzene. I cannot form chlorobenzene. Okay? So I think this idea is very, very simple. Based on the charge of my carbon and based on the charge of my functional group, I can predict whether it reacts with a certain species or not. And I can predict whether this reaction or this product is possible or not possible.